Hey now, think positively, all right? We talked about this. I know. We hardly talk about anything else. Because he is in my castle and has already proven too much for my daughters to handle. When I find him... No, Mother Miranda. Yes, of course, I understand the importance of the ceremony. I won't let you down. Can someone please tell me what the hell is going on here? No. The place is full of nothing but blood and death. There you are. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Let's see what Okay, I think we're we're live. Right? I I hope so. That was the trailer for Resident Evil Village, but Welcome to the GGP channel. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us. If you saw her just now in the trailer, uh, you might recognize her voice, maybe a little bit of her performance in the motion capture, but we have Maggie Robertson. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> it's so awesome to have you here, Maggie. Uh, it's just we're we're honestly really honored uh, from the GTP family to have you here and um, you know just to be part of this uh, part of the stream uh, and celebrating Resident Evil Village, celebrating you and you know the month of October for some spectacular uh, content. So oh <laughs> just the you you're already giving me like uh, Lady Dimitrescu vibes. Um, well, of, yeah. of the way that you you're just like so vibrant in the, in the way you move but uh i Ooh, I, I love that. vibrant in the way i move i don't know if anyone's ever said that to me before but i like that well write it down okay <laughs> writing it down. So, yeah, right uh so actually i just wanted you to just introduce yourself first just to for anyone who's unfamiliar with you just uh, you know pretend like i don't know anything about you maggie who are you? Oh, God. Uh, I'm Maggie <laughs> Robertson. <laughs> okay. Heavy loaded, right? Practice this. Uh, I'm Maggie Robertson, and I'm a voice actor and actor and singer and motion capture artist. And I play Lady Dimitrescu in Resident Evil Village. And I'm a general goofball and nerd. And that's me. That's you. <laughs> Well, then I think you'll yeah. fit it right in with our community. Um, I wanted to ask, how did you actually get started as a voice actor? LOL. <laughs> it was Resident Evil Village. Okay. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, that's still crazy to say. I had sort of done some bits of voiceover, like e-learning or industrial type things back in Virginia where I was living before I moved to LA. Uh, but I never really considered doing it that seriously as a profession 
And then I booked Resident Evil Village kind of by chance, by luck, um, which is a crazy story. And I guess I'll tell it because here we are. Uh, I had just finished my master's degree in classical acting at Lambda, which is a really prestigious institution in London. So I was actually living in London. And then... Yes, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch went to that school, right? He did indeed, and he is now the president of Lambda. He became president when I was there, so I got to see him walking the halls occasionally, which was very strange. He is not... Do I want to say this? Uh, He is not as tall as I thought he was. Oh. Yeah. You're... Well, I assume you're not nine feet tall yourself, so... (laughs) Unfortunately not, though. That would be cool, but also cause a lot of problems in day-to-day life um no i'm six feet tall i'm only six feet tall uh but i was taller than benedict benny we're on a first name basis um he went to my school i can call him benny uh yeah so you can you're you're lady d you can call him whatever you want that's right yeah, he I, should know who i am exactly i <laughs> if i if i walk the halls of uh of that school i'd be like oh my gosh maggie robertson just just walk by me. I'm only five foot eight, so <laughs> you'd only also, five foot eight. You'd also be like, he's Mason's a lot shorter than I thought. I want to say he was something around five nine or five ten, maybe, but I want to say five nine. Okay. Uh, well, well but we're, we're not he heidist, does right? live up to the. We're not heightest, no, but no. he does live up to his name in that his voice. Every time he opened his mouth to speak, his voice was so resonant. It like rumbled the earth this entire interview is just going to be me gooshing about benedict cumberbatch apparently but he really his smog came out every time he spoke because it just was so massive and resonant and amazing that's all i also saw uh jeremy irons walking the halls of lambda that was pretty surreal because he came in and he had a little white fluffy dog on a leash and he just walked into the building and was like walking down the halls with his dog. And I was like, what is happening? Is no one. And the crazy thing is, is like, I looked up and I was like, what is anyone else seeing this? But no one else was really reacting to the idea of Jeremy Irons walking down the hall with his white fluffy dog. I I suppose you just have to get used to it. Right. At that point. It's so casual. Yeah. Yeah, Like celebs. Who cares? So that's (laughs) cool. You were in London for, so how, how long were you in London for then? Um, I was there for a year and we cranked out so much stuff in a year, um, really intensive work. It was delightful because that was the first time I'd really gotten to focus on craft and focus on acting only. We worked on it 24 seven. Um, and that was such a blessing. I'd never had the opportunity to do that. And you, it's really lucky to be able to do that. You can't, you don't have access to it in that way in everyday life. Cause you have to worry about, how am I going to pay my rent? What jobs am I working this month? I have to do this, 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 and this. And to have the opportunity to just think about acting, to just be focused on learning and development and craft is such a blessing. I feel very lucky to have had the opportunity to do that. Yeah, that's so, that's amazing. Just to be like laser focused, as you, as you said, and uh, yeah. just not worry about all the, all the other problems that the world comes with, <laughs> but to do it, just like hone in on your craft uh, and the art that, that you're able to create uh, yeah you don't have all the other distractions to get in the way you really just get to be an actor and yeah it's awesome that's so cool and you said that you're a singer as well I am you yeah are. I started with music I started with singing first and then I fell into acting and like kind of put music theater to the side. Or... Mm, singing I started off training classically so singing more opera type songs uh and taking voice lessons and then i did acapella and i was musical director of my acapella group and would arrange songs and beatbox and i love singing harmonies okay. that's kind of my jam i would much rather sing harmonies than uh be the front runner of something myself um so i love all of that and then i kind of pushed it to the side in order to focus on acting and pursue that hardcore um so yeah <laughs> so yeah uh, that's all i love how everything peters out with just like a <laughs> i know it's it's sometimes it's you know, you're like where okay where do i end the question right? I, like or my answer like how do uh, yeah so yeah that's that's a, that's a great way um 
So as an artist, what, what exactly motivates you, Maggie? Where do you draw inspiration from? Hmm, I love this question. Um, I think that actually as an artist, it's really important to just live your life to the fullest extent as a human being. You have to allow yourself, you have to allow yourself to experience the full range of emotions by going out there and trying new things and having this insatiable curiosity for life and always having a willingness to learn and discover and play. I think that's really what art is about. And so I think you can gain a lot of inspiration as an artist from just living your life to the fullest and leaving yourself open to new experiences and new opportunities. So, live, so your live, 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 live your life. Live your life. Oh, we got some singing from Maggie on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't going to ask, but that was. Uh, I'm glad we got a little. A little. You get that one for free. Okay, Next we got that we'll, one. For, uh, yeah. we'll charge. By, <laughs> by the second. Uh, let's see. Here's a here's a uh, audience question. If you could have any role in any movie, Broadway show, etc., what would it be? Oh gosh, I think you guys are already gonna guess this, but Galadriel from Lord of the Rings. Oh my God, I would love to be an elf. Like, come on, Kate Blanchett. She's so willowy and ethereal and like, <laughs> she shines, she emanates light every time she moves and speaks. And oh, I, just, I, like, I wish she was like more, like featured more in the movie actually. She's such a, she was such a great character. Have you read the so books cool. or just watched the movie? Oh yes, yeah. Hi, I'm a nerd. Hi, I'm Maggie, I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> that's baby Grogu. <laughs> uh, so yes, I've read the books. I read some Aurelian, although I don't remember as much of that as I should. But <laughs> I did it. Um, can, can you speak the the elf elfin el, no. elf language? No, I wish I could. Oh. I wish I could. I always thought those people were super cool. That's like deep deep diving nerd nerd and right there. Deep dive nerd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I guess we'll we'll start some questions about Resident Evil. Um, like, okay. All right. So let's start at the beginning. How uh, did you land this big break role of Lady D? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's bananas. I, so, oh, right. This is where we left off earlier. So I had just finished my master's degree and then I moved to Los Angeles in 2019, January, 2019. And I booked Resident Evil a couple of months after I moved here, which is insane. Um, I essentially, I'd moved to LA. I was an unrepresented actor, which means that you will pay money to subscribe to all of these different casting breakdown sites. And I would every day go in and submit myself to different breakdowns that I felt were applicable to me. And I happened to see this one that I fit the specs for. Mm -hmm. And what I learned later is that oftentimes with video games, because they have so many NDAs and they don't want anything leaked, they will create fake breakdowns. So nothing that I saw in the initial casting notice was actually real. Nothing said Resident Evil. So I had no idea what I was auditioning for. I thought it was just going to be some like little voiceover gig to get my feet wet. Let's see if I want to even pursue this. That was kind of my attitude of like, eh, let's just see. Why not? I got nothing better to do. Um, and then I find out that I get an audition and I go in and I do the audition. And the audition felt great because it felt very similar to theater. They had an area taped off that I could explore. And so I could move around the space and get physical and explore my physicality as the character. Um, and so it felt very natural. Again, I was coming off of this master's degree where I was so laser focused on acting that it felt, I didn't even have to think because everything was so routine in my body and it felt all these processes, these tools that we can utilize as actors in order to create a character. They felt very instinctive because I had been training my body how to do that for the past year yeah, intensively. You're, you're naturally, you just fell right into it. Exactly. So it felt really, there was a sense of ease about the audition, which I think is always a good sign. And it allowed me to just go in and have fun and play. And then when I left the audition, I was like, you know what, regardless of what else happens from this, I had a good time. And that's kind of the attitude that I think you should try to have with auditions. You have no, you can't go into it with any expectations on the outcome. You have to just go into it and find something of value for yourself. What can I get out of it that's not dependent on the outcome? Um, wow. So I did that. 
And then I, you know, you leave and you're like, okay, that was fun. Moving on. I'm going to go live my life. Mm -hmm. And a month or so after that, I find out that I get a callback and I go into the callback. And similarly, it felt very theater based. I was able to move around. This time we did a lot of um, improvisational stuff. And they threw a lot of new ideas at me just to see how I would respond. And again, that stuff is fun. That's what I had been training for the past year. So I was able to just let loose and explore and play and discover new things. And then again, I left and I was like, great, that was super fun. Bye. I'm going to go live my life. And then months after I did the callback, I finally get the call that I booked the job. And by that point, I'd already, I'd like kind of forgotten that I even auditioned in the first place. I was working on a feature film. I was not even thinking about it at all. Right. And I think that's always the way that this works is the second you can let something go, the second you release your anxiety around it, it will come back to you. Um, so that's kind of what happened. And then I show up to the table read again, still thinking that this is some little gig and I show up to the table read and very quickly picked up on the energy in the room that was so not a little gig. Everyone was so excited. There was just this palpable electricity in the air. I, I will always remember that, I think. It was so, I walked in and immediately I was like, oh, whoa, something different is happening here than I thought. Uh -huh. um, so then I went home after the table read and I finally had the script. I finally had my paperwork. And then I furiously researched to figure out what game I was in. And <laughs> It was, that was pretty astounding when I found out. So yeah, that's how I got into <laughs> Resident Evil. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the, the Resident Evil fandom is, is, is very real. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, 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 I can't even imagine, cause I'm already a super fan of Resident Evil. I just couldn't imagine like entering it from your perspective and knowing that, you know, what, what, you curate the you know the the performance that you do uh the, like knowing that there's going to be a swarm of fans reacting to it uh and very passionately about it uh so capcom actually very heavily produced your character lady d uh and she's also kind of like the, the first main villain that you you face off against in the game uh which makes sense why they would promote it but it's also just like such a rich character too uh what like did did you have any anticipation of what the reaction would be to your character like so well received or what was your reaction when it was like this like warm embrace by so many communities no oh my god no i was so clueless <laughs> <laughs> i i was such an idiot throughout the entire thing i was just like i think because everything was so new that i had no, I didn't even have any, um, I had no way of, no, I had no framework to even begin to tell how big of a deal this would be and to even begin to guess how much this character would mean. Especially, I think going into it, I always knew, oh, you're in a Resident Evil game. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to be super cool. But I never, I think I expected the game to do really well as a whole but I never expected my character specifically to blow up in the way that she has. So that was a complete shock to me. I'm still shocked by it. And I didn't even realize it at first. I think when they started using her in the promo Im images and trailers, um, Nicole Tompkins, who plays one of my daughters in Village and also is Jill Valentine. Right, yes. Hey-oh. <laughs> hey um, Wait, she's, she, she's one of the daughters too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so cool. He plays okay. Daniela. Okay. Um, so she's the one that texted me, and we had kept in touch even after filming. And so she texted me, being like, eh, "By the way, your character's blowing up. You should probably know." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay. Let me Google that." Um, <laughs> what to do, right? Because she she's a villain too, so you you don't really expect like people to react that positively towards uh, such such a awful character <laughs> hey now sorry, sorry. Awful. <laughs> no but i think it's it's exactly what you said she's an incredibly rich character and i think capcom has done such a good job of creating a character that is both insanely visually striking i've said this before but i think i sound really smart when i say it so i'm gonna say it again um <laughs> she is a character that has a very clear visual story, meaning you can 
just look at her and even before she opens her mouth and says anything you already have an idea of exactly who this character is and so that's honestly how i based a lot of my acting choices i'd had they showed me a a preliminary image of what they thought the character design would be and i was like oh oh my gosh wow that gives me so many ideas you're already giving me so much to work with um so i think that that's what's really cool about her is that she is striking she makes a very clear visual impression on you and that's part of why she blew up immediately but then once you play the game you realize that she's also this incredibly dynamic and multi multifaceted and three-dimensional character she's really interesting and the more you can unpack her different layers she's like an onion or parfait (laughs) she's got layers um yeah, the more you can get, the more you play the game, the more you unpack that. I think that that's what keeps you interested. Yeah, At she's, first, she's you're a mom too. Oh, sorry. She's a, I love, I love the fact that she's a mom. I can't get over it. I think it's one of the most astounding things about her. And it humanizes her so much instantly mm-hmm. because then when she loses her daughters, oh my <sighs> gosh, can you imagine? No wonder she flies off the handle and goes <laughs> into like a massive rage. So... Yeah, I think there are a lot of humanizing qualities to Lady D and a lot of characteristics that I think are actually quite admirable that audiences and community bases can relate to and see themselves in. Yeah, certainly. Um, it, it's it's why I, I honestly like immediately fell in love with her too. Uh, and just that ex- exactly, you know, what you, what you said, Capcom really did a, a really fine job of... Uh, you know, f- having us face off this this three dimensional villain. Yeah, yeah, they did a great job the whole game. There's so many. All the lords are incredibly interesting, and also there's a lot of really killer females in this game, yeah. which is super duper fun. It's Always. great. Yeah, uh, female empowerment, right? Girl power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how was the how was like the the motion capture performing? Well, did you know that you were going to be doing that in addition to the voice acting? First question. Second, just how, like, I, I assume you had never done it before. So how did you, like, have to, I, I've i seen videos. It just looks so difficult. So um, it's a crazy. big Lady D hats off to you. But, yeah, just tell us about the, the mocap. <laughs> yeah, no, you're correct. I had never done that before. I never even really heard of it before. Was totally clueless going in. I was definitely stressed before it started being like, I don't even know how to prep for this because it's so far and different and beyond anything that I've ever done before. But then once I showed up on set, it was, it really was kind of this light bulb moment for me. A lot of things clicked into place. And I think because I had just come off of my graduate program where a lot of the training was very physical and about understanding your body and the way that physicality can create character and playing with different rhythms, both vocally and physically, all of these things really, really helped me latch on and adapt to the volume as quickly as I did. The mm, the volume is essentially the big open space that we use to shoot performance capture and mocap in, and it's surrounded by cameras that pick up your physical data. And so to that end, playing in a big open space you you only have yourself to tell the story that's what makes it so difficult is you you can't rely on costumes or set pieces props makeup to tell the story for you you have to tell it and the only way you can tell it is with your body with your skeleton that's being captured the physical data from your skeleton that's being captured so if you don't believe that the circumstances that you're in. If you haven't created the world in enough detail for yourself that you feel like you're in it, we're not going to feel in it either because it's incredibly exposing. You have nothing else to rely on but yourself. And that's what's kind of fun about it. I always like the things that are an extra challenge. Um, But yeah, it's, it's a unique. And to that end, it does feel a lot like theater, especially black box theater, where again, you're in this open space and sometimes you have a block to sit on but oftentimes you don't you know so it felt 
similar. It felt like it tied into a lot of my background thus far. And it is kind of the perfect marriage between TV and film and theater because you have that really great imaginative component where you just are relying on yourself and your physical expression in order to tell a story. But then you also have this incredibly technical component of you have to hit this mark. It has to be here. Look at the da 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 da. So it is a nice marriage between the two. So it, there was something about it. And I've always liked my um, undergraduate degree was a liberal arts degree. And so I've always liked this idea of getting to combine all of my different interests into one. Mm. And so I think that's why working in the volume, doing performance capture felt really natural because I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, I do this over here and I do this with this. But now I get to do them together. Great. Got it. Um, so I think that's what's really cool about it. Yeah, and you really have to rely on your imagination to fill in a lot of things with motion capture because you're you're being uh, you know captured it for a video game. So you know, like set pieces are like pieces of plastic and mm -hmm. lots of tape, and like you just uh, it's amazing what you really have to like do like the performance that you're you're expected to do. And then like the, your, your mind has to fill in all, you know, all of the world yeah. around you. Uh, yeah. You are the sole creator of the world, yeah. which is insane. You have to endow these objects and endow the stakes of the environment high enough or whatever enough in order to make it be believable. It's, it's insane. It's quite a rush actually. I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question and then we're going to actually get in some, to some gameplay with, uh, okay with you uh where did you actually draw your inspiration for the character of lady d like the body language the voice like where did where did that come from i'm sure you had some good direction from the studio yeah. but there there had to be i mean how'd you create lady d yeah i don't know if i pulled from any one thing specifically as I mentioned before, I think the image, the character design that Capcom came up with was really my major point of inspiration. And so then I was able to look at that and see, oh my gosh, she's a woman. She has all these curves of her body. She has this wide swope, uh, sweeping brim of her hat. She's got this fabulous cigarette that just kind of sit lazily on her hand. So she seems, I knew instantly that she was going to be a high status character. And when you're playing a high status character is oftentimes what you want to think about is the fact that stillness can become power. Stillness can give you power. And they don't, high status characters don't waste their energy with extraneous movement. You'll see the low status characters that are kind of like, oh my gosh, hey, hi, what? how are you? Like, what's going on? But the high status characters know that they can sit firmly in themselves and people and the world will come to them rather than them having to go to that to the world. So I used a lot of those principles in my physical creation of Lady D. And I loved playing with this idea of curves. She has so much curves in just her image, but then how could I incorporate that into her movement? So nothing physically happens in a straight line. If she brings up her hand, it's rounded, it's curved. It's almost like um, a, a spiral, a twist. And if she's gonna sit in the chair, it's not gonna be straight down. She's gonna take her time and wind herself into the chair. Right, she's so those are, never at a direct angle either. Like it's always like to the side, yes, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, she's very much like molasses in her physical movements. And um, and also the cigarette, there's this high, this high quality, um, she's she felt very well educated to me she felt very regal and elegant and refined and so you have these curving movements but then you also have incredible moments of specificity with like hand movements or uh, i can't think of anything else but like there you go insert some brilliant idea here um and that that applied into her voice as well so when i was creating her voice i really wanted to capture that sense of old world refinement and regality and so i tried to find this kind of arch quality to the way that she spoke and i think you can classify that technically as a mid-atlantic or transatlantic ac ac <laughs> accent but i was not consciously thinking oh i'm going to do a transatlantic accent here i was thinking okay these are the qualities about her that i'd like to embody in my voice and how can i vocally reflect that 
And I think all of this also, I pulled a lot from my Shakespeare background because she does feel very Shakespearean. She's very heightened in the way that she um, operates in the world and she loves language. She has such amazing uh, dialogue that she says, again, hats off to Capcom for giving me such great material to work off of. And so then, then if when I discovered the love of language that she has, because she uses all of these archaic phrases, then I could really have fun with it. And then you can you can play with elongating her vowels and then cutting to really sharp, quick consonants, because she has both that kind of smooth, smooth elegance to her, smooth grace. But then also she still has to feel like she is dangerous and violent. It has this real potential for violence. She needs to feel like you are in danger. So playing with those two ideas, how can I be smooth and yet aggressive um, at the same time? That Those were, those were my, were my inspiration yeah. points for Lady D. Yeah, you just kind of like, you know, pluck different things out of uh, yeah. what, what you can and you just you you really you and well, I'll give credit to Capcom obviously, but you really did create such a unique uh, new new character in villain. Um, yeah, and it's it's I love her a lot, and I love this whole experience. It really has changed my life, and one of the reasons why I love it is because, as we've discussed with the mocap and with this character creation for Lady D, it really did allow me to pull from my background and all the things that I had been working on up until now are the things that had made me uniquely primed to step into this opportunity and take on this character. So it's one of those unique experiences where I can look back and see, oh my gosh, everything that I had learned up until now are the building blocks that prepared me to take this on in a really immediate and linear way. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's that's the path. It led me to this exact moment, which is surreal. It's very cool. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so we're actually going to, dive into some game let's gameplay. play we're going to continue the discussion with maggie there um before we do i do want to do some uh or call it a few things uh just so everyone knows in the chat we're doing a couple giveaways in our discord um so that hop into our discord it's discord.gg forward slash gay gaming pros we're actually giving away of resident evil village collector's edition in addition to a few uh, item kits that are pulled from the collector's edition and then some uh, steam code digital uh, downloads so hop in our discord for that and then i just also lastly want to give a couple shout outs so bear with me maggie uh, i just want to give a shout out to my twin sister mckenna and my life partner bailey who are actually watch having a watch party in the room right now <laughs> uh also <laughs> little, i know it's, they're super That's excited so for this too. i know <laughs> want to give a shout out <laughs> shout out to my best friend gordon uh also want to give a shout out to my big brother jordan and his good health to my other brother jared and brianna and their kids gracie paisley and harlan um who are also watching at home in spokane and then to <laughs> spokane and to my uh to donnie who was my best friend growing up and actually helped shape me uh, into the Resident Evil fan that I, I am today. So those are all my shots. Yeah. Well done, Donnie. Yeah, well done. We He actually introduced me to Resident Evil 3 when I was just a youngin, and I that became my, my uh, favorite video game growing up. Oh, my gosh. All right. That was really amazing. I loved hearing all the people in your life. That was really cute. Oh, Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope all your peeps are enjoying it. <laughs> I hope so. They they are. I'll, I'll hear uh, all the good feedback after this. All right. I'm going to start some <laughs> gameplay right now, okay? Let me know. <laughs> I just punched my mic in the face by accident. Sorry. <laughs> I need to fix your camera really quick. Sorry. Whoops. Sorry, chat. I was set up. All right. There we go. All right. So, uh, you know, viewer beware. There is uh, some blood and a little bit of cursing in the vi <laughs> in the game. Uh, so just want to give a little heads up to our audience who's watching right now. Uh, to set the scene, uh, I just actually killed one of your daughters, Maggie, 
and uh, I'm roaming through the castle and uh, about to see the level of anger uh, you are you are experiencing. Okay. Did you have any idea like how like how the world would look too while you were filming? I think I had some clues. I think they were able to show us some of the designs um, and it definitely helped. Again, all of these were things that I pulled from with ideas and her castle, of course, is so grand and elegant and refined and, and still old world. It felt like a Beauty and the Beast castle. It did, yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, just been caught in time in a way. And it's so beautiful. It so perfectly reflects her character. Here's, here's one of my favorite scenes of yours. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> the cigarette. You puff first before answering. <laughs> Obviously. Priorities, come on. She has to calm down before she answers the phone. But that was also hilarious because I couldn't actually touch my mouth because I have a head cam. So everything has to happen on the outside of the head cam. It can't pass in front. I'll ask you more about it, but just so uh, we don't talk over your... Because he is in my castle. Don't speak over me. <laughs> Don't speak over yourself, Becky. <laughs> the I'm the one okay. person who's allowed to. No. <laughs> yes, of course. I understand the importance of the ceremony. I won't let you down. <laughs> the sheer strength. Hell with the ceremony. <laughs> that man will pay for what he's done. I love it's always like that man or that man thing. <laughs> so <laughs> she just goes from zero to a hundred so quick. It's insane. It's both an insane acting challenge, but also an insanely fun challenge. It's really great to be able to do that. Yeah, set the set the seed for us. Uh, I I've actually seen some BTS footage of this, but for our audience, like, just like I, you already said that the the cigarette was like so many, you know feet in front of you you couldn't actually be you know putting it in, yeah. in your mouth or anything but yeah and i think you can see that in the bts as well uh so you're wearing this head cam which is capturing your facial facial data which mm -hmm. means that you can't put anything in front of it that will inhibit the facial capture so any object that you're interacting with on your face has to happen outside of the camera or like if i touch my face it has to be here it can't be it can't actually touch my face so i have to kind of mind stroking myself <laughs> Uh, so the cigarette happens out here, the uh, application of the lipstick happens out here, or has this happened? Yes, this has happened already. The sucking of Ethan's blood happens <laughs> oh, out you're here. You're not like, directly putting it to your mouth, right? It's like No, and let me tell you, that was such an awkward thing to shoot in the volume. I was like, hi guys, it's so nice to meet you. Let me just mime sucking blood oh, <laughs> and look like a complete idiot for <laughs> our first interaction. It has to feel kind of uncomfortable, right? Like, I was like, look, guys, we're just going to get real close real fast. This is what it's going to be. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, but yeah, getting to flip a table was definitely a bucket list item. I really enjoyed that. They had to tell me to calm down. I was a little too into it. Um, it's good to get yeah. those things out, though, right? You know, it's fun to let loose. Yeah, and also, yeah. you know, she gives me, I never allow myself to do that kind of stuff in real life which is probably a good thing but then to play a character like this where i where i do have a chance to just be like okay well let me be crazy let me let it all out it's really fun it feels like a an outlet you're just like great now i'll let it all ah, let's go so you're saying you can't in real life uh flip a dresser that weighs several hundred pounds no i know it's well so practice sad. i mean like you're you, i'll start the weightlifting now yeah yeah <laughs> Call my trainer. <laughs> they did, they did, good thing they didn't have a real dresser for you to throw. <laughs> yeah, set. it was just it was just piping all tied together, and I was just throwing it. But then you have to be careful with the throw because you cannot you cannot hit the expensive cameras that are all around you. So oh. there was literally a guy stationed in the direction where we planned for me to throw to like catch it in case things went awry. Oh, and gosh. I'm very grateful that I did not break anything because I do not have very good hand-eye coordination. Or, or break. I played memory. soccer. <laughs> 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 uh, I I would hate to have the job to be the guy that to catch the 
the dresser that you just threw. <laughs> <laughs> to be on the receiving end of yeah. all of that fury. <laughs> Even though it's piping, I'd still be terrified. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna put the the DB key. The hat is so big. <laughs> I love that she has to bend through <laughs> door frames. You ungrateful, selfish wretch. You come into my house. You lay your filthy man hands on my daughters. And now you even try to steal my property. Damn. Rest while you can. Because I will. Hunt you, and I will break you. <laughs> that is such a great line. Oh my gosh! It, it's just, it it sounds like you um just like summoned that from the depths of your lungs. Like it's, and I will break you. It's just like, it's such a. I great just had so much fun. Oh, the other thing I was thinking about when we watched the phone scene. Mm -hmm. is one of the little things i think you have to have fun with it for yourself and one of the things i discovered is that lady d loves names and so every time i said a character's name i tried to like give a little extra sparkle or shine to it especially <laughs> especially heisenberg it's so <laughs> it's so fun to say all the names are fun so i just i like to have fun except for ethan he, he never he never gets a uh, name dropped. yes but ethan winters <laughs> there's so many good consonants in there again you just have to play with language use your vowels and your consonants was there was there any like improv that you brought to to the character like was like man thing like a thing created by capcom or uh or did you were, were you allowed to do any improv 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 for the for the dialogue no, we stuck to script. Um, so all of that was already outlined for us and, and fleshed out and all that jazz. And I think the areas where we were allowed to explore and play was definitely physically. And so, you know, I had input on the whole, the structure of the phone call scene. I came in with ideas and I was able to talk to Steve Knebley, our director. Actually, I kind of love Steve because I sat down at the table to try to map things out and he just comes over to me and he sits down on his knees and he's like so what are you planning to do with this scene and i was like oh fudge okay let's go batter up <laughs> let's go <laughs> but it's fun oh yes um and speaking of fun this is a uh, viewer beware this is just a, a a shocking scene so uh <laughs> it's a it's a, a weapon i didn't actually know that uh lady d was uh, had it in her arsenal, so. <laughs> oh my god. Isn't that gnarly? The way it slowly slides off. Oh, it gets me every time. It's so disgusting. <laughs> so, not only do you, are you nine feet tall, but you have, like, retractable fingers. claws. Yes. Yeah. Obviously. So terrifying. <laughs> There's just. But something... I always love the casual way. She's so casual about it. She's just like, ugh. Yes. I'll, I'll slice you. Yes. <laughs> Let me go collect my hand really quick. Yeah, go get that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, casually. I'll just put that in my pocket. Right. Severed hand. <laughs> gosh, it's just so unnerving to see. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Sorry. <laughs> It's unnerving to see uh, like a, a realistic uh, person, but at an unrealistic height, right? Like nine feet is just so uh, frightening to me. <gasps> oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love horror, but I I still get scared and anxious by. Um, I love I love watching other people get scared during gameplay. It's, it's just so. so Terrifying. <laughs> so, okay, so you knew your character was like nine feet, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, nine how, feet six. Nine feet. Oh, I do apologize. Uh, <laughs> nine feet six. Uh, did like interacting with other actors for mo motion capture. Oh, by the way, this is great. I just also love that he puts, you know, first aid chemical on his hand. 
Ta-da! Yeah, do not try this at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is some Resident Evil magic right here. <laughs> For the stuff that Ethan goes through, I'm just like, you know what, that checks out. Okay. His poor hands, man, oh, they goodness. get just brutalized. I yeah, he's missing some fingers on the other hand. Um, Maybe I'll go as Ethan Winter's hand for Halloween. <laughs> just to make my entire body. <laughs> that is a, oh, uh, gosh. So bright. Uh, but sorry, back to the questions. Uh, how was... Because I, I assume, like, you know, the other actors were of relatively normal height. So um, how was that, like, yeah. pretending to be... Or did they put you on, like, stilts or... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was super fun and interesting as well. I, and again, it was one of those moments like, hey, guys, nice to meet you. Let me just stare at your crotch all day. Um, <laughs> we had to think about eye lines. So if I was in a scene with someone, oh, hi. Hi, hair. <laughs> if I was in a scene with someone, um, they had to be kind of looking at a point above my head when they were talking to me. And I had to be looking at a point below their face. So I was around crotch knee height, um, generally speaking. So we're having this dialogue for instance, in the big opening ceremony scene when Heisenberg and I are going at it, Neil and I, Neil was looking at a point above my head and I'm looking at Neil's kneecaps and we're exchanging this dialogue back and forth of this sibling rivalry stuff uh -huh. and we're not actually even looking each other in the eye, which is pretty funny. <laughs> so you have to, like, you're, you're looking down at him and he's looking mm -hmm. up at you, but mm -hmm. you guys are both like... Yeah, we're like ships in the night. Our eye lines are this. And yeah. But again, that's where the imagination comes into play, where you just have to imagine that you're looking someone in the face. And <laughs> similar to a lot of on camera work, too, where the a lot of the angles and shots that they'll do are kind of. Um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Well, they're about perspective so you're not if you're, if you're getting a if you're having your one shot your close-up one shot you're not necessarily looking at another person and you have to deliver your monologue mm -hmm. as if you are you know um besides lady d who is your favorite lord i just as a side note i just love how many suits of armor she has just lying around um <laughs> my favorite lord oh i don't know you know, there's something about Moreau. I, I don't think Lady D particularly cares for Moreau. Okay. So, Does Lady D particularly care for any of her siblings? I don't know. But Maggie has a soft spot for Moreau. He's just so tender, sweet, wholesome. You want the world for him. You just want him to succeed. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I am I am very invested in the conversation too, but it, I, it's so hard to multitask. <laughs> I am uh, I have to face off one of your daughters, right? <laughs> against one of your daughters. Which oh, the it? insects! I don't. Uh, we're in like a. Attic. Isn't that terrifying? Like, that's such a little detail that instantly makes it all the more horrifying. Oopsie, boopsie. Oopsie, doopsie. <laughs> okay. Gotta watch out. Be better, Mason. Okay. No, Be better. Do it again, but better. There we go. Okay. Anyone else get that Bop It reference? Hey yo. Did you play that growing up? Oh yeah. I loved Bop It. Bop It. The, the original like three, right? The original three, but then I also loved the Bop It Extreme. Mm-hmm. Flick it! And then it was like, Ugh. Oh my gosh. Uh oh. Oh my. Oh no, my controller buddy. disconnected. Oh, buddy. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh my gosh. Hold on, I'm having technical difficulties. Oh no. Oh buddy. No. Oh no. Oh no, my controller oh, disconnected no. and the, this is the worst moment. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How do I, how do I I'm trying I'm using my mouse now. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was so close. Wow. Wow, you managed it. Wow, okay. Let me see what's going on with my control. <laughs> but I do apologize. I, I did have to kill your daughter right there. Um, right in front of my face. Right in front of you. <laughs> You're going to be so pissed. She's going to get you. Just you wait. 
I apologize to the audience too. Sorry, my, my controller just decided to disconnect itself. I knew there would be one technical glitch today, but. There's always one. <laughs> But hey, you didn't die from it. I did not die, so I came. So that's a success. <laughs> oh my gosh. This happened to me the other day, um, and I was hoping it wouldn't happen on the stream. Because I don't know how to use my keyboard as a controller. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, now I'm just wasting ammo. <laughs> uh, maybe we just pause on the gameplay for a second, and then I can just... Ask some qu questions of for you. Hold on, I'm trying to stop this now. Oh my god, how do I? Oh. How do I? Oh, now I'm trying to use my. All right, I can't even get my key. Oh my god, this is so. I'm this so is all the so... shots you've just been shooting into the wall. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get That's out. That's one of... strategy. There we go. Okay, I was trying to pause. <laughs> that was so bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, uh, these are the things that give the stream character. You're giving us character. Yeah. We love I'm, it. We love to see it. I'm. Uh, I'm making this. Uh, this stream exciting for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. I'm going to pull some questions from the audience. Let's see. Okay. Uh, was there any really funny moments on the Resident Evil Village set? Um, like if there were like lines messed up or any, any like, did you like accidentally hit the, the guy uh, in the face that you were throwing the, the dresser at? Did I? <laughs> I'm sure I came close. Um <laughs> I think probably my funniest behind the scenes moment is what I've already talked about of just having to mime Ethan's sucking Ethan's <laughs> blood. I think that was just the silliest thing I've probably ever done in my life. <laughs> and then Steve, our director was like, can you give me more? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> so <laughs> just generally looking like a maniac at all times. <laughs> Um, okay, so beside yourself, um, if Lady D were to make it to the big screen, who would you like to see play the role? Ooh, yes, I've thought about this, and I would nominate, I nominate Gwendolyn Christie for the role of Lady Demi oh, Trapp. So good. Wouldn't she be great? She would be phenomenal, yes. Yeah. <laughs> She'd be so good. I mean, obviously, I want it to be me, but like, if I can't, then... Right, right. I'm make one. Yeah. Uh, at least, at least they could have you as one of the daughters. You know, it's a, a, a wink to the uh, to the fans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see here. Uh, after let's see, after your breakout role as Lady D, are you going to try to go for more? Or oh, I guess, I, would you like to go for more antagonist type roles? Like, do you love playing a villain? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I love playing villains. Also, because I'm tall, because I have this mature voice, I often play either villains or moms or you know maternal uh, matriarch women in power. I guess is my type and um, my typecasting. So yeah, I love playing villains. I also think villains are the most interesting. They are. I, I'm going to yeah, sound like a Slytherin when I say this, but hey, here we are. I'm gonna sound <laughs> Heroes are boring. Come on. They're so bound by the limitations of morality and ethics. And when I play a villain, I don't have to worry. I can do whatever I want and not have to think about uh, consequences. And, and again, like similar with the table flip, it gives me the opportunity to like let all these things out. It's, it's super fun. It's super fun to play. And then I also think it's important and interesting. What I like about villains is you, when you play them, you cannot judge your own character you have to you have to love them and you have to find value in them and things that are good about them or 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 else your your portrayal is just going to be one dimension and so i like i enjoy the process of finding out why they are the way that they are i think that that's really interesting because villains are not born they are made so how did you become this way Right. I think that's fascinating. Oh, that's such a good answer. Um, is there are there any like upcoming projects that you're able to 
to share with the audience? Um, I do have upcoming projects <laughs> that I'm not able to share with the audience, but most recently I will say that I was able to do the mocap for Runway in Rogue Company, which is a game. It's a, it's a game that's been around for a while, but Runway is a new character that they've released. And similar to Lady D, she is an absolute badass can I say badass? She's a badass. Um, <laughs> she is so completely cool. And again, it was one of those things when they showed me the character design, I was like, oh my gosh, this, this woman is too cool for school. I abs- She's like my hero. I want to be here when I grow up. She's super fun. Uh, but yeah, I got to do the mocap for that. So it's just my physical movements, just my body. And then she has some amazing voice actresses that are voicing her, both her older version and her younger version. Um, Yeah, but that's kind of the cool part about mocap and performance capture as well, that there's a lot of different pieces that go into the making of the pie. And it's not any one person's performance. There are a lot of different people that go into making this one character. And that's why when they work, they really work because you have so many different um, artists involved and people allowing their creativity and their spark to shine through each of these characters. So I think it's cool. Yeah, well, and you're a veteran now. I was I was actually going to ask, would you return to to mocap? But you've you've already answered that question for me. So uh, yeah, I'll yeah, definitely would return. And also, you know, it was my first exposure to this, but because of that complete, like everything just clicked into place. I felt like I was exactly where I was meant to be at the right place at the right time. And so now I have reoriented my entire life to push me towards more voiceover, more performance capture. I came out here to do on camera, but now I'm like, yeah, I'll get to that when I get to it, but I'm really interested in this right now. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. So a couple last questions for you, Maggie, before uh, we're about to wrap up the stream. Are you dressing up as anything for Halloween? (laughs) um is, is it too meta to go as lady d for i mean there's going to be so much well, cosplay uh of there's got to be there's going to be so much i can't wait to see everyone's i cannot wait to see everyone's lady d cosplays for halloween um sar yeah that's going to be happening for sure i think i will not go as lady d i've already dressed up as her quite a bit i'm toying around with a few ideas and i haven't settled on anything the idea i came up with today i think is kind of hilarious being ethan winter's hand <laughs> i think it's brilliant you just uh, you know you said it so now you just gotta you gotta commit you gotta run with it you just gotta do it yeah i've always i've always wanted to be an old lady like fully go for the old i want to have wrinkles i want to do the full kit and caboodle and just have a little cane and walk around and wag my finger at people i think that would be really fun um well maybe because i don't know you're an actor you might actually just get the chance to play an old lady in one of your future roles so that would be a dream <laughs> i i love that <laughs> i love that so the moral of the story is that no i have not yet decided on any one costume i'm like i have decision making anxiety and so i'm still tossing around all the different ideas in the air and i probably won't make a decision until last minute because that's the way i roll and <laughs> go from there Right. Okay. Uh, well, last. I what about to... you? Oh, for, uh, I'm actually going as Tina Belcher for Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Fun. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah. I've got the I've got the dance down. I think. Um, so. Can we see? I... <laughs> That'll I'll save that. I'm for... putting you on the spot. <laughs> you got to pay extra for that, people. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, I wasn't expected you to to. Uh call me out on that um uh-huh, uh-huh. But, oh, everyone's screaming in the other room don't think i won't it, but <laughs> <laughs> um, give the people what they want uh, they have to pay for that okay uh, <laughs> so our stream is about to next end next time <laughs> next time i'll do it for the for the next stream maybe we'll do this uh for the next time that we have you back maggie uh, great, 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 great. <laughs> i'll come uh, in as ethan's hand you'll come as tina <laughs> yes <laughs> I, want, I just wonder like what you would do with the hand though it's I don't know if anyone has ideas, you know, shoot oh, me a message. Yeah. Let me know how to, how I can pull that off. <laughs> right. So how, how can uh, people follow you, Maggie? Um, and is there any last words you'd like to say to the audience? <laughs> um, 
Yes. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Maggie the Bard. And yeah, just, you know, just keep an eye out on all of those different platforms. I have a lot of cool stuff on the horizon, maybe some merchandise, maybe some music. Ooh. I should be, I'm going to try to like send out something to collect emails to get y'all in a newsletter so I can keep you up to date on things. If that's something you're interested in learning more about and being kept in the loop about, um, that will happen eventually. So just, you know, like st- keep an eye out and stay in touch and, and I'll announce things when I can announce things, but we've got cool stuff planned and you should definitely stay tuned and I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Incredible. It's been honestly like a, a highlight of my life having you here uh, for this stream um, and just getting to know you a little bit better and uh, play against you is just, it's, uh, for me, it's just a really cool moment. Um, so I just want to show off your what I'm also I'm putting you on the spot right now again. You're gonna regret ever telling me anything about you before <laughs> we went live. Are you gonna show off your your? your oh tech? my gosh! Okay, yes, I'll 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 do. See, I'm doing all the stuff. Yes. I'm. <laughs> this is what happens. You're like we're never bringing her on again. So I, I do have a tattoo of Resident Evil on my arm. It's because he's hardcore. It's a gnarly You're a tattoo. Fan. So it's gnarly. It's a it's a severed nemesis head bleeding onto the Dar. umbrella symbol. <laughs> bleeding onto the umbrella symbol. Oh my yes. gosh. Yeah. There's there you go. Nope. That's the that's the fan service I'll give for today. Good. Good. We're happy. We're complete. We can go now. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Maggie. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, well, again, I just want to thank you for coming on to our stream at GGP. Uh, also want to just give a huge thanks to Capcom and for your team, Maggie, for actually helping make this happen and putting this together with us. Um, and also want to give a, a, a special thanks to our partners at uh, Razer and Seriously, uh, who are the makers of Best Fiends. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. This is this has been a great experience for me. So, uh, I hope to have you back very soon. I hope to be back very soon. It was fun for me. Thank you for having me on. It was such a pleasure and an honor. It's always an honor to be asked to do things like this and to get to talk to people and talk to fans and it never gets old. And just know that we, me, and all of the Resident Evil cast, I know for a fact we all love. We really, really love you guys. The fan base has been what has made this process so special and unique for us. And you've you've just been amazing. You've been anything and everything I ever could have expected and more. So thank you guys. Do 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 do. All right. I can't take myself seriously. We need to go. You're a good time though. <laughs> thank you. Um... Okay. <laughs> All right, and, and honestly, thank you again for, uh, from the LGBTQ plus community too. So you're awesome and incredible. Love you guys. All right, bye everyone. Bye.